Hi, fellow sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. Well, ding dong, Roe is gone. The United States Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, and on today's episode, we'll discuss the fallout, the freakout, and whether or not gloating is befitting for a Christian. I'm Pastor Shane, and I'll be the spiker of the football today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> So the draft leak that we saw earlier did not intimidate the justices, and the final ruling is pretty close to what we already saw. Basically, that abortion is not a constitutional right, mostly because enumerated rights in the Constitution are usually enumerated in the Constitution. But the right of an abortion emerged from the emanations and penumbras, which I'm told is a brand of peyote. A little bit of emanations and penumbras in the Constitution are going to tell you all kinds of things. Abortion is awry, the sky is purple, Pete Davidson is funny, all kinds of psychedelic nonsense that should never be law. The ruling came down 6-3, to three, kinda, as Robert's concurrence was not quite concurrent, and the dissent opinion went thusly. Yes, I too hate decorative pillows. But I love that you have someone recording this for you. I'm like, ready? Ah! It's like, uh, honey, ooh, sorry, I was on photo mode. Can you lose your ever loving mind for me again? Get angry! This is atrocious! This is war on women! How f dare the Supreme Court do this? How do I have less rights than my mother? Not everybody believes in your sky daddy. Not everybody believes in your cloud papa. The fact that you tied religion to your decision is pathetic. Rolling back the clock on women's rights and bodily autonomy is pathetic. Most of the time it's a clump of cells. Cells. You are also a clump of cells very angry clump of cells. You f***ing cervicons love fetuses. You love fetuses. You are pro-birth. You are pro-amniotic sac because fetuses can't talk and they can't vote against you. But they make a good narrative for your f***ing re-election campaigns. Pathetic proof every day. FYI, there are children in the foster care system that you f***ing won't adopt. So please tell me how you are pro-life! Well, I mean, I've adopted out of the foster care system. So is it cool with you if I'm against murdering babies, or are you going to scream at me more? How dare you! Karma does not forget. And she may take some time to come back around, but she will get to you. Not everyone believes in karma, lady! And the fact that you tied Eastern religion into your car rant is pathetic! Now, what most of these shrieking demons fail to mention is that this Supreme Court decision does not outlaw abortion, it simply puts it in the hands of states and by extension into the hands of voters, which seems to be an appropriate place to battle with a contentious and emotional issue. But instead of their ire being directed at politicians, most fixated on the justices, especially Clarence Thomas, who was repeatedly called the N-word. Lovely. Others boldly took their displeasure out on the children, my favorite being one lady who protested with her children holding a sign that read, Don't force this on anyone. <laughs> I like trolling my kids as much as the next, but that's, that's a pretty sick burn. Corporate America got in on the issue with Amazon, Disney, Apple, Netflix, Bank of America, etc., etc., vowing to cover the travel costs of their employees to procure abortions in states that permit it. It's cheaper than paying for maternity leave. Pretty messed up. But at least the corporations recognize that the overturning of Roe makes abortion a state issue, and different states will set different laws reflecting the will of their constituents. Some states will ban it outright, some will permit it with tougher restrictions, and some states will attempt to make it available until the fourth trimester. 
That's how our system works, though most people don't seem to realize that. It's genuinely depressing how many people in our country are unfamiliar with federalism. Like meme makers, here's the Statue of Liberty giving us the finger as it heads back to France. I'm not sure why Lady Liberty hates babies so much, seems out of character, but I will note that the Statue of Liberty resides in New York, and in New York abortions are legal up to 24 weeks, and after 24 weeks if the mother's health is at risk, health being very loosely defined mental health constitutes. But 24 weeks of abortion isn't good enough for Lady Liberty, so she's heading back to France where abortion is illegal after 14 weeks. Because… freedom. The fact of the matter is, our blue states are far more permissive with abortion than pretty much all of Europe. Nevertheless, the Green Day punk rocker 50-year-old Billy Joe Armstrong declared at a concert in London that he was renouncing his citizenship and staying in England cause there's, quote, too much effing stupid in the world. He lives in California, where abortions are legal up to 24 weeks, and after 24 weeks, just so long as you can get a note from two doctors saying it's okay to kill your baby. But I agree, though, there is too much effing stupid in the world. And speaking of mentally challenged, here's some arguments floating around the interwebs. Constitution says you can't kill babies unless it's with a gun. No, the Constitution doesn't say that. I think you've been partaking a little too heavily on emanations and penumbras. In fact, this might blow your socks, but it's actually illegal to kill babies with guns. How devoid are we of critical thinking skills that people actually looked at that statement processed it in their brains, and came to the conclusion, yes, this is a sound and cogent point. Share. Others charged that opposition to abortion wasn't about the unborn. If it was about babies, we'd have excellent and free universal maternal care. You wouldn't be charged a cent to give birth, no matter how complicated your delivery was. If it was about babies, we'd have months and months of parental leave for everyone. If it was about babies, we'd have free lactation consultant, free diapers, free formula. If it was about babies, we'd have free excellent childcare from newborns on. If it was about babies, we'd have universal preschool and pre-K and guaranteed after school placements. Give me what I want or I off the kid. I want a lactation consultant and a helicopter on the roof in 10 minutes or else. How about no? No, we don't need to agree with all of your policy prescriptions to be against killing the unborn, and we don't negotiate with terrorists. Furthermore, there would be even more services available for women if the other side would stop firebombing them. There were 41 separate incidences of violent attacks against churches, pro-life organizations, and pro-life property since the Supreme Court draft was leaked on May 2nd. If you really cared about women, Maybe stop attacking charities meant to help them. But all of this is really just another rendition of you're not pro-life, you're pro-birth. Joel Berry from the Babylon Bee addressed that pretty well. He said, of all the narratives repeated by the pro-abortion left, this one bugs me the most. Let's examine it. In our area alone, there are four crisis pregnancy centers. At these centers, you can get free prenatal care, free baby formula, free diapers, free clothes, free car seats and cribs, community support. There is a local pro-life center that offers free daycare to single moms who have jobs or need to go to school, free meals for kids, community, and support. There are several inner-city missions run by pro-lifers in the area that offer free food and shelter, clothing. There are hundreds of pro-life churches in my area, and many of these, including my own, you can walk in any day and get free groceries, gas cards, free counseling for addiction, depression, etc., love, community, and support. I have personally seen pro-lifers take single moms into their own homes, buy them cars, adopt their babies, pay their medical expenses, and offer them every resource imaginable without judgment. And this isn't exclusive to my area. Pregnancy centers outnumber abortion clinics three to one in this country. Churches even more. No matter where you go, there is help for you. Yes, and that's true of us as well, and we're not unique. We support our pregnancy centers, we serve the needs of our community through Young Lives and our Reaching Higher program, we work to keep families intact through our Care Portal initiative, we offer respite night for foster parents, and several members of our church over the years have personally adopted. The notion that Christians only care about pre-born life is completely and totally baseless. There's no facts or evidence or data or reason to back that claim up. None. Zip. 
Zilch. Actually, the evidence is quite to the contrary. Christians built the orphanages and hospitals and food pantries, and it's Christians who still lead the charge in all altruistic endeavors. Every single statistic and data point that we have demonstrates that. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean we're perfect. <laughs> Far from it. And there are plenty of Christians who have even gotten abortions. And we are recipients of grace, and we are called to be gracious in return. Now, like Elijah, I like a little mockery, and celebrating the end of Roe I think is wholly appropriate. But the war isn't over, it's just getting started. And I think the words from Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural address is a great guiding light for us as we continue to advocate for the unborn. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work. And we'll continue the work next week. In the meantime, like, share, rate, review, join my author's Facebook page, submit your questions or comments. We might do a mailbag segment. And I'll see you next week for more Purple and the Culture. Mm -hmm.